What's up, dirty plant hoes and all you dirty plant enthusiasts out there? It is I, Raquel, your plant madam. And today, or over the next couple of weeks, most likely, we're gonna be doing a series like called Watch Me Work. Cause to be honest with you guys, I have a ton of work that needs to be done around the house. Before we get started with today's video, yes, I did. Just get a new forearm tattoo. Yes, it is very freaking tender still. And uh, you wanna see what it looks like? Here's what it looks like. Ooh. It is a Luna Moth and some really rad like 70s type of like flowers, some flower jobbies, you know what I mean? I bet you guys thought that it was gonna be like a philodendron or an anthurium or something, didn't you? Well, you were wrong. You were wrong. Nope, just some plain old, you know, uh, regular schmegler ass shit, you know? But uh, yeah, so that's my new tattoo. <gasps> nope. I have a new puppy that is constantly into like spare leaves and plants that are too close to the ground. And I've just been kind of playing crazy catch up. Come here, Lido. Just trying to move stuff around. I'm sorry, Peapot. Greatly offended, Mrs. Peapot. But I've been trying to move stuff around and just make it to where it's less accessible. Winston, get out of it. So I'm just gonna be doing stuff. Watering plants, treating plants for pests. I feel like when it comes to, if you're a beginner houseplant enthusiast and you're wanting to know like how I specifically take care of some plants, I would say the best way for me to show that to you is just by doing it and by you guys just watching me do it. So. Today is going to be a Watch Me Work episode one, and I really hope that you guys enjoy it. Here lately, YouTube has been really fickle with me, and they have been age-restricting my videos, and I've been having to, like, appeal it, and then they'll come back and say, oh, no, we didn't mean to do that, so, but it's, like, killing the momentum of my videos lately, so if you guys could give it a like down below, that would be awesome. All right, let's go get started and watching me work. Nobody beats you. You're the wind. Nobody beats you. Ain't that right? Lilu, no! Good job. Okay. These are just like uh, baby wipes. I came in here and I was just wiping down some leaves. I saw some spider mites and I didn't have time to like go fill up my bottles. So I just used some baby wipes. I actually took them out of here. I think I needed, needed them to clean up a Lilu mess. But, let me take you off the pedestal. Oh, no. They're right here. Huggies. Fresh scent. Yeah, I didn't mean to bring the ones with the perfume in here. But it does work when you're, you're in a pinch and you really need to clean some stuff up. So, the first thing that I like to do when I'm doing chores is I, I, try, to, I try to make myself stay within a certain area which would be right here. This aria right here, it was in the other tent. Everything that was in the medium sized tent has been moved over here into the larger tent. So I, I'm sorry about the noise of the fan in here guys, but it's really warm and I have to wear a long sleeve shirt because of my, ta my tattoo being fresh. So I have got to keep the fan on. So I'm sorry, please bear with me. 
down here are a lot of the begonias that uh, Botanica sent to me and also that I got from the Silver Plant Daddy shop on Etsy. You know, that's what we'll be up to today. I've got some distilled water. That's all I have. I actually need to go to the store and get some more. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take care of this today and we're, we're going to check in on the seedlings. And I also have some more seeds over here. And um, I think my next video is going to be another um, you know, watch me work type of video and we're probably going to collect some pollen and things like that. I've got some blooming anthuriums behind me. So I'm going to go ahead and like put you on the pedestal and we'll see how this goes. My tattoo is sore as fuck. Um, anyways, I've got some tools. So I'm wearing a tool belt. As you can see, a Ace Hardware uh, tool belt here, and my tool belt is filled with, and in my uh, deal I have my phone, and then I have all of these tools right here. So I've got a Sharpie, just in case I need to mark something, and like all kinds of different a big brush tool and some small brush tools and on the other side I have a big pair of scissors or big trunks and stuff like that and then I have a small pair these are my favorite these are my Fiskars I just recently cleaned them off they were a little gummy but yeah these are my favorites so that's all the tools that I have in my tool you know belt or whatever and then other things that I bring in here, which I want to go to, need to go fill up this and get myself some more of this. But this is just the this is just the soap, alcohol, and water mixture. Um, please don't tell me that you killed all the leaves on your plant by using this. Like, do a couple of test leaves on your plant first. Don't. Don't just go ham on something with something you've never used before, okay? You know, be be cool about it, you know? Anyways, I got that. I've got some uh, fungicide. I'm all I'm almost out of this also, so that needs to be put on the list of stuff. Distilled water, fungicide. Then I have a big bottle of just plain old tap water, all right? And I have some bleach water these are typical this is like i'm giving you real things that i do here this is all the shit that i bring in here when i'm about to take care of my plants because i don't like to get up a whole bunch of times as you guys know but i will end up getting up a whole bunch of times um also i bring in a cup of this like distilled um watered down bleach water and this is what i put my fiskers in when i'm done using them on a plant i will drop them in my bleach water and just let them rest there. The, the trick is don't let your uh, Fiskars or any of your scissors like stay in the bleach water. Be sure and like rinse your tools off really well, dry them off really well, because I've had to buy new stuff because of that. So this is to disinfect, to keep viruses from traveling from plant to plant. Um, I had a little bit of a virus scare with one of my phylos and it was enough to teach me before I had to learn a really hard lesson. So I, I was getting really lax about disinfecting my tools, but I'm, I'm getting back in the game of, uh, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. That's what they say, right? Isn't that right? So, and then another dirty tool that I have is this bucket here. It's like a, um, what would you call this? Put it up a little bit. What would you call this? I call it like a pedicure tub or a, what do they call it? So this, I'll have to illustrate what I use this for, but this keeps me from making so many trips to like the sink and stuff when I'm trying to treat plants. So yeah. So yeah, let's get started. I've got all my shit. Let's get started. So normally I have knee pads, but I don't know what in the hell I did with them. So now I'm going to wear, not wear, I'm going to put beach towel down for my frick frackin' knees. It's pretty boring. <laughs> so, 
so far. Get that out of the way. I also brought the moisture meter because I all, I still use it. The face of it's all busted and fell in, but it's actually still accurate. It still works, so I still use it. Is this thing fucking focusing at all? Let's move the Aurea and see how our little seedlings are doing. The Aurea also looking good. Very dry, but looking good. Guys out. So someone commented and said that was probably too much moss to use in the bottom of this uh, tote and I completely agree. Next time that I do this I will not be using that much moss and um, they also suggested that any moss that I have left over that I could boil and reuse and um, I thought that was a pretty good idea too. So yeah. Seedlings are looking pretty good. They're growing pretty slow though. Get that out of the way. So I took care of three begonias without pushing record. So here's the three that passed the vibe check. There's this beautiful North Oberamensis from Botanicas and I didn't water it because there was still some water in the reservoir. Not a semi-hydro situation. That is just runoff from the last time I've watered it. So I'm gonna let that go. Then there is this Darth Vader Yana hybrid, also from Botanicas. I watered it just slightly, ready for a repot. Tons and tons of roots, but and this other one I wanted to, I showed you guys, but I wasn't filming it. Look at how, um, how many roots this has. Definitely ready to be repotted. It is just going to go, it's going to go ham when I get it into some new media. I just haven't done it yet. Absolutely gorgeous. I've got a few cuttings of all of these because I, I absolutely have learned my lesson on not having backup begonias. So I've got backups of all three of these already started. That would be my number one recommendation. If you buy a really nice begonia, uh, the first thing that you should do once you have enough material on it is take a propagation and it can be as easy as doing something like this. So my mother of pearl Begonia from Steve's Leaves got infested really, really bad with mealybugs. So I took a couple of cuttings and then like I just had to trash the base of it. But the couple of cuttings that I took, I just stuck in a Ziploc bag, right? And this was only like a bit of stem, I think, and one leaf when it got put in here. I sealed it up. I blew a little bit of air in it. I sealed it up. This bag was slightly moistened. Is there a bunch of mealybugs in here? I would not be surprised if there was a bunch of mealybugs in here. I don't see any. Oh, there is one, yeah. Damn, I got way too excited. Yeah, there is one, but one is better than like 500 million. I'm going to kill that with some alcohol. So, still struggling with mealybugs. Even in the bag. But... Anyways, it's not like it was. It was like crazy run over with them. I think that might have been the only one in there. <gasps> I wish, huh? Right? Anyways, but that's the mother of pearl. But anytime you get like a more expensive begonia and you're really afraid of losing it, always get your propagation bag started. And that way it's like having an insurance policy. And if you mess up or if you underwater or something crazy happens. And you can leave these in here for a, a ridiculous amount of time. I've left begonias in, in plastic bags for over a year before. Totally fine. <sighs> Alright, so next up is from Silver Plant Daddy. And this is the 
begonia. Oop, it got caught on the side. Begonia Metallicolor. Looking pretty good. This leaf looks really rough. I'm going to trim this one off. I'm going to trim that off because it's got this really nice looking leaf. This new one coming in right here, right? And these two really, really pretty looking leaves. So I'm going to trim this ugly one off. Dip my cutters in my alcohol. Oh, not alcohol, but um, bleach solution. I'm going to take my yucky leaf and get rid of it. I'm going to check the moisture level. It says it's pretty dry. I wouldn't have guessed it. It feels a little bit heavier than I'm used to. So, be sure to tuck these leaves back on the outside. I'm going to give it just a little bit of water. I used to water like super conservatively because I was keeping begonias in this type of situation. And I feel like obviously the water recycling that happens inside of a bubble like that, it's going to be, you know, you don't have to water them as intensely, but these I'm actually having outside here in, not outside, inside of a grow tent, but it's a big grow tent, you know? So I don't know, it just, I didn't know how things were going to go, but things are going really well. So I'm trying to be sure uh, and water them thoroughly and not be afraid to water them. So next up from Silver Planet Daddy, and I think that they're all looking really good. This is the one I'm most excited about. This Chlorosticta crossed with amph Amphioxus. And I think it looks really good. Got a couple of poorly leaves here, and I think I'm going to trim them off. And I think a lot of times, trimming off your leaves that look kind of bad when it comes to your begonias is a good thing. Because you don't want them, once they go bad like this, they have a tendency to get moldy. Um, so, and then the mold can travel to other leaves and degrade other leaves. So, it's just a good idea if a leaf is clearly... Uh, taking a downturn and it's starting to melt, you know, begonia language melt or just kind of looks yucky. It's okay to just go ahead and remove it. It's your plant. Don't be afraid of your own plant. You know what I mean? So just took off this one leaf. See? Just kind of yucky looking. I'm going to check it and see if it needs any water. It feels heavy, but um, Darren uses like a pretty coarse mix. So, try to be gentle. Not just as gentle as you can be, you know. And it says it's dry. See, and I wouldn't have expected that because like I said, Darren's mix is kind of coarse, so it feels kind of heavy. I'm going to put it in its little, this is its like tray. The cup is its drip tray. Take my distilled water. And water it. It's just kind of like barely sitting in a little bit of water down here at the bottom. Looking really cute though. Next one up on my little tray here is the Begonia Baramensis, and I'm really, really happy with the way that this is turning out. Such a cool, it's very reminiscent of the Darth Vaderiana, like the design of it, but it seems like it grows like so much better. You see we got another like poorly looking yucky leaf down here at the bottom. I'm just going to kind of get rid of that one, and every time I chop off one plant and then I go to another plant. I'm dipping it in my cup here to disinfect. No, it does not hurt the plant. I can feel this one needs water. I don't really, you know what? I'm going to check it anyways because I bet you I'm wrong. No, it needs water. Dry bones. Little water in there. 
beautiful, beautiful. This next one I'm really excited about because it seems like it's really growing well. This one leaf was like a wonky leaf, a shipping leaf, I think. Check them out. They're really starting to grow already. So cool looking. It's a very dark eggplant color. I think it's pretty true to what you're seeing on the screen. Very dark, very cool looking. I'm going to leave this here because it doesn't even look that bad. It's a little wonky, but it's not all... Um, it's not melting per se. I can feel that this is dry. These should be dry anyways. Like I said, it's been three or four days since I've been in here. Water that bad boy. Then this is the miniature um, philodendron species, like the terrarium thing. He's terrarium type philodendron that he sent to me that just kind of like stays miniature. I'm going to chop off some of these bottom yellowing leaves. And then on my next work with me video, I've got some gigas in a tote that I kind of forgot about that I want to show you guys. It's so crazy looking. Also needed to be watered. And this. Yeah, like this one always had like some white stuff on it from where he shipped it to me. Hmm. Should I go ahead and get rid of those? Down here. The ones up top are so much prettier. Okay, I'm just going to cut off, like, all the yellow, yellow ones. And we'll leave all the other ones. We need a little terrarium to put this one in. I think I might put this one in with my, uh, little spotted guy. Can't remember his name. I'm telling you guys, my ability to recall plant names since I had COVID last year has been really, really discouraging, but that's okay. Just keep practicing. So this is a philodendron species miniature. Also from the Silver Plant Daddy shop. So freaking cute, you guys. Is that not the most dainty looking little perfect leaves? So cute. And I just keep all... I mean, they're already in like little drainage dishes. Which is like these little clear um, Dixie cups. And I use these sometimes when I'm shipping things. I'll just put one on top of another to keep them secured. I like them a lot when it comes to, you know, using them as like little drip trays and stuff like that. So that's this guy. And I know I'm talking to you guys a lot. And normally I would go through this, like, obviously I would go through it a lot faster when I'm doing it by myself. But... You know what? Sometimes not even. Sometimes I just... Sometimes I go this slow. Here is another beauty from the Botanicaz shop. I love this one. It is so gorgeous. It's so hard to capture on camera what the leaves are truly doing. But they're so sparkly, you guys. It also looks like it's been watered pretty recently, but it does have, like this yucky leaf right here. I want to get rid of it. So I want to dip my scissors in. Trim it up. And here's another like almost ghosted out completely leaf. Just getting rid of it. Just try to keep our plant healthy. I'm only going to give it a little splash and I was keeping this actually in a uh, sugar skull ashtray <laughs> because at the time when I was putting everything up in here I was really sick with like some sort of flu I call it my Rona number two it was like my follow-up immunization but anyways it just worked so well and I kind of liked it being in like the ashtray so I just kind of left it in there 
that guy is looking really good. I think this is called like silver suede or something like that. The one that I was just taking care of, silver suede. And then we only have two plants left on this bottom shelf. And then I think uh, we'll have to like, this will be obviously a, a lot of videos will be like this. So be sure and let me know down in the comment section how you feel about it. Because this scene, this is going to work out for me. I'm going to get a lot of plant chores done. And you guys can see also how I do a lot of my plant chores. Excuse me. Okay. This is my Begonia Amphioxus. Move my bleach water. Can you see Winston's ear right here? <laughs> He's asleep right next to me. So... This is like what it looks like. This is what it looks like, you know? Really big, really powerful. Cool looking, eh? But all throughout this begonia, there's like dead leaves, dying leaves. And like I said, those really promote like mold growth and all. Oh, but you have to be really careful because these are so dainty with the stems, you'll just pull a freaking stem right off, but it's okay. Because they also propagate super duper well. So, oh look, and it was about to have a couple flowers on it. Anyways, don't pull a whole stem off. Try not to do that. But I also like pinch. These, like I said, stems are so brittle that I just pinch. I just pinch them off, you know? Not all of them, just trying to get the brown. And I almost need like, I know that my nails are like tweezers, but I probably need a pair. Ma'am, you hush. I probably need a pair of like bonsai tweezers. Who are you, who are you yelling at, madam? You hush. Lilu likes to bark a lot. Update on Lilu. I can't eat with Lilu sitting next to me. But you hush. Because she will bark at me. So I have to put her up. Lilu. I have to clean up my mess. I do not have a bowl in here. so. But anyway, she'll sit and bark and bark and bark and bark and bark. And I'm like, girl, no, that is not going to work for me. And I have to go put her up in her little playpen area. But she is aggressive when it comes to the food. And she gets all the good food. She gets treat treats and all that stuff. So I don't know why she's so aggro. I hope she grows out of it because it's <laughs> we haven't been able to eat while Lily's been out. Like I have to put up I have to put you up every time. Because you'd be bad, bad girl. Why you be so bad? Yeah. There's like a ton of these. I have just moved this in here into this big tent from my small tent. And there was just a, like a lot of debris on it. It's a dead leaves. And they're just getting too dry a couple times. Also just a couple old blooms. She likes to pee on my pants. So if I take my pants off, it's like sometimes I'll take my needs off to like go to the gym so I'll take like big sweats on and put like smaller sweats on <laughs> to go to the gym and if I don't if I leave them in the floor I'm revealing myself but if I leave them in the floor she will come by and she will squat and take a pee pee on my pants and I'm like girl yeah so she's a pants peer she is the food Gestapo and uh yeah. We haven't started kennel training her yet. She's got like her own playpen area. I bought, um, essentially I bought a, what do you call it? A baby gate deal and built her like a playpen area. So I don't have to kennel her up at night. She's so small, you know, I just let her have her own. She's basically got her own bedroom. Let's put it like that. Lilu has her own bedroom and I have to put her in her bedroom when I'm eating. She'd be a bad girl. All right. That's a lot of dead leaves and debris. 
It actually looks kind of gangly. So what I assess about this guy is it probably needs to be cut back. All of these need to be propagations, you know, because it's looking so empty right here. It's just like kind of, you know, looking very empty, a little scraggly. So we probably need to take some propagations of this guy, but in the meantime, we're not going to do that today because really we're just trying to get through some like maintenance and watering. It's not a propagation day and we have to stay focused or our ADHD brains will explode. I know this is dry as a bone, but I just wanted to show you guys that it was dry as a bone. And I think that it's a complete and total myth that you need to keep your begonias always moist. I mean, I think that's like the first thing that pops up when you Google like how do I take care of my begonias? And it'll say, keep it constantly moist. I don't think that they like that at all. So, I let my begonias dry out. Like, get dry. Like, SpongeBob dry. You know? And sometimes they die. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Sometimes they die. But they don't usually die. They just lose a couple of leaves. And then they get over themselves, you know. So, here's a little stem we accidentally broke off. And then here is all of our dead, dry leaves. I actually have like a little miniature broom and dustpan too that I bring in here. And I can't find it either because I'm a piece of shit, I guess. But, and that's what I use to get up underneath these right here, like these shelving pieces so that I can clean it out. I like for everything to look nice and tidy in here. Half the time the tent looks more tidy than the rest of my house does. But when you have pests, you have to be on top of your shit, you know? So like, you gotta be in here and you have to like what you're doing. I see a lot of people talking in the plant community right now about, um... People getting really overwhelmed with their collections, which I think if you're getting overwhelmed with your collections, then your collection is too big and you need to downsize, obviously. But if you don't like plants anymore, if you're a person who just, if you just got into it and you liked the hobby and now you don't like the hobby anymore, there is no shame in that. You don't have to be ashamed about, you know, uh, not wanting to keep as many plants anymore. But yeah, because if it's stressing you out, then what the fuck are you doing? You know, what are you doing? So, I like being out here. I like spending time out here. It's, I've been doing it for, God, I don't even, I don't know. Like, I've been keeping houseplants for quite a while now, and it's, I really like it. I like what I'm doing. The internet, on the other hand, the internet, I don't like the internet as much as I like uh, my plants and stuff like that, but... You got to deal with people on the internet, so, you know, here we are. But that's the, just the bottom shelf that we took care of today, guys. And um, let me give you a little example really quick before I leave you. And let me show you what my tub is for. And maybe you guys will like this idea. And you guys can use this idea when you're taking care of your plant stuff. And maybe it'll make it a little bit easier on you. Maybe not, but maybe you'll like it. So what I do is if I have a plant that needs to be treated for uh, spider mites, thrips, you name it, whatever, if I need to treat it, um, I take it and, you know, instead of, this is just an ul an ulterior method of taking it to the sink, right? So I don't, sometimes I have my bar cart and I most definitely use my bar cart to transfer plants from place to place, mostly to transfer water from place to place. But, and I will load up my plants and I will take them to the shower and stuff like that. But I don't want to do that every time. And sometimes plants need to be treated before I'm ready to like really do all that shit. So I take my little, you know, thing. I do my biz with my, let's see. A big deal. I spray her down with my solution, right?
because you don't want to let that stuff get ahead of you because if you do let it get ahead of you, then your leaves are going to look like shit. And you really don't want that. It's not the end of the world if your leaves end up looking like shit, but it's not really what you want. You know, you want your leaves to look good. So just like super quick, going to go around these leaves. I don't see anything active on these, but it did have a couple last time I was in here. So just going to treat them. And like things like Anthurium, I don't like to let the alcohol mixture just sit and stay on it. You know, you have to test leaves on your own plants and you have to make sure that this type, whatever solution you're using, you got to make sure that it's not going to hurt your leaves. But I just like to give it a good rinse too, to just, once I've stirred up all the bugs and shit, I don't want to just leave the bugs all just sitting there all nasty and shit. So once I do that, oh, bub. It's not, that's not heavy, but I'm still, I did not mean to just there, BT, sir. Then I take my Plano distilled water in a bottle and I just, just really spray it down. But instead of like all the water going everywhere and all over the floor, it's actually going inside of this dish tub. So. You know what I mean, Burr? It's just a good way of, and then also when I had one of those big, um, like 10, what is it, 10 gallon? No, not 10 gallon, like a five gallon backpack ordeal. And I had like the sprayer and I was trying to water my plants like that. Um, it, this, this tub also works good for um, hosing plants down when I had that, but it's just too big and bulky and it's not practical for me. So I kind of quit doing it, but. So all the water went into the tub. None of it's all over the place. Everything's been rinsed off. It looks gorgeous. She looks good. And then we just put her back. And we didn't have to go to the sink. We just treated it right here. And then, you know, of course, it's important to rinse out your tubs and stuff like that once you get done. But that is the whole bottom shelf. That is the whole bottom shelf done. We did that together. We checked on all those begonias. We trimmed some dead debris. We washed off an anthurium and we uh, made sure all of our begonias here were watered. That's our whole bottom shelf. The only thing left that I need to do is sweep up some dead leaves and some debris down here. Oh, I got some pruning shears that fell. That's not good to leave in the freaking floor. Yeah, you see all those leaves and stuff. I need to clean all that stuff up and then that's all we'll have time for today because this is going to be a long ass video. So I hope that you guys... <laughs> Lenu, come here. Who are you barking at? Ma'am, who are you barking at? Would you like to say hi? Would you like to say hi? Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> See what I mean? She is so aggressive. Lenu. <laughs> Who are you barking at? She's crazy, you guys. Also, really quick update on a couple of things left that I'm going to be purging before wintertime really gets shut down. And, oh my gosh, it's totally stuck. Hang on, I'll put the card on. I know that my dirty plant hose have been looking forward to seeing a variegated Adansonii on a purge listing. It will not be on a purge listing. It will be an individual listing. And it'll be one of the last things that I sell before we shut down for winter time. Um, yeah. So definitely looking well rooted <laughs> and happy to see you if I'm being honest. And then it's little... I'm literally rooting these in water, you guys. Just rooting them in water in my tent. I'm just showing you what I'm doing. And then this beautiful elbow. Flip it around. Look at that. So creamy. Has good genetics for staying, staying like th thoroughly marbled though. And the roots are looking really good. Just water in the cup. You're looking good. 
So that two last little deals that I'm definitely doing, and this is the mother plant. And this Adansonii is from Kunzo. I don't know if you guys ever watched the um, that Plant Master Kunzo uh, video that that Legends of Monstera did. This actually is from his collection. It had two people in between him to me. And I bought this from Kaboo Kaboo. She's very uh, reliable and trustworthy in the Time to Splurge and Purge community. So, And there is my beautiful Adansonii. So much different looking the one that came from Botanicaz. So beautiful though. Not quite ready to be propagated yet. Just wanted to update you guys and let you know that was coming down the pike. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed watching me work, watching me get some plant chores done. I really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. Check out the description down below. Go check out my other channels. We love you guys. Peace out. Later taters. Bye. And now I would like to give a big Dirty Plant Enthusiast members only shout out to Seven Puggies, Cindy C, Abby Gilbert, Ace Cadet, Alexandra Chilton, Alina Cameron, Always Propagating, Amanda Davila, Amy Adwan, Apollonia, Ashley Caraveo, Ashley Sexton, Bailey Barnett, Bethany Estes, Bougie Panda, Bren, Carly Grinnell, Casey Dillon, Casey Glidewell, Chamomile Camille, Chelsea Bertucci, Colleen Hatton, Corey Traxler, Crazy Plant Lady, Cuties with Cardi, Danielle Holt, Darren Heppel, David Sawyer, Deandra Bella Rose, Emily Kingsley, Aaron Roche, Finner Lamb, Fredo79, Goncalo Martins, Gretchen Ward, Haley Martin, Haley Kester, Hannah Gould, Harper Gray, Heather Summers, Heidi Christofferson, Hells Bells, Holy Coley, Houseplanty Goodness, Hunter Jolly, Jamie Ellis, Jake Rowe, J.S., Jenna Maria, Jennifer Girolametto, Jessica Viola, Jody Smith, Cassandra Hines, Kathy W., Katrin, Kelly Hodgson, Kim Toby, Kimberly Mossman, Not Dude, Christy Bim, Kaya Hauser, Kylan Cooper, Lauren Loves Lees, Leah Tarbuck, Lily W, Lilac Moore, Lillian Morin, Lisa Nolan, Lola Isabel, Luis H, Luna Moth Forest, Maggie Davis, Mrs. McGrath, McKenna Smith, Mackenzie Hogarth, Mara Baker, Maureen W, Megan Moyna, Meeks, Mev H, Michelle A, Michelle Meckle, Michelle Reed, Michelle Watts, Monica Allison, Monica Humphreys, Nikki Toller, Ordinary Plant Girl, Pam's Pretty Plants, Plants Every Inch 902, Rachel Sharp, Rhea Shields, Ricky Mulbeck, Sophia Bahadir, Soholio, Sarah Santos, Sarah Parrish, Seth Miller, Showers ASMR, Sophie, Sophie Bodding, Steph Miller, Stephanie Bazella, Stephanie Menzies, Tanya Houtsaker, Tara Christensen, Taylor Kaysen, T, Tiffany Wright, Trent Grolmus, Birdigree Dreams, Bernie Zhu, Victoria Vonseca, and Wesley Lamentino. And now I would like to say a big, dirty, and nasty shout out to all of my dirty, dirty, dirty ass plant hoes out there who get members only access to the prop shop and my once a month live chats. Danny Ryan, Alex Truell, Alexandra Kennedy, All Fallon's Franz, Allie Pierpoint, Allie Wells, Allison Havens, Alyssa Braden, Amber Metter, Amy Baxter, Andrew Wolf, Angela's Foliage Affair, Anna D, April Showers, Buy Me Flowers, Aerial Roots are Lisa B, Ashley Kathleen, Aubrey Puff, Botanicaz, LLC, C. Woe, Cassidy Walker, Kate Christie, Chelsea Clifton, Chrissy Spencer, Christina Kuntz, Christy Stewart, Sierra Jones, Danny Sprague, Deanne Santos, Denise Tomer, Diana Warner, Ellen Hoover, Emily Cephalu, Emily Forhe, Emma LaCroix, Emma Wiley, Erica David, Florence Ramirez, Gab, Gabby Barnaby, Gina the Great, Haley Eblen, Haley Stanley, Hazel Foreman, Heather Lamb, Heather Lucart, Heather Worrell, Henrik Arnes, Hollis Good, Houseplant Heather, Izzy H, Jum Meow, Jasmine Renee, Jedi KCC, Jennifer Rouse, Jennifer Lee Johnson, Jenny Vanderbilt, Jess 
Marvel, Jessica McCock, I'm not sure. Jessica Stanford, Jill Cunningham, Joanna Meyer, Joanne Hernandez, Caitlin Guavi, Karen Brackville, Carissa, ah. Caitlin Oates, Catherine Sproles, Katie, Kayla Taylor, Kelly Smith, Kelly Costello, Kelsey Cowan, Kim Latimer, Kristen Williams, Christy D, Crystal Leah B, Laura C, Mary Boots, Mark Straw, Megan Earls, Megan Gowdy, Melissa Hartog, Melissa Mins, Michelle G, Mirena, Miss Lisa, Natural State Ashley, Nicholas Caruso, Nikki Grilly, Odd Avocado Tree, Olivia Wise, Peyton Gold, Pinky from Hot Farms, Plant Friend Down the Street, Plant Princess Simonetta, QR, Rianne Chekasang, Rico 9383, Riley Elizabeth, Wren, Root and Leaf, Sarah Schwartz, Savannah Archuleta, Shannon Mattingly, Shay Bro, Spotted Oreo 10, Stacey Anderson, Stephanie McKinnis, Tammy Carroll, Tara Peterson, Tara's Plants, Tropics in the Midwest, Teddy Ruxpin, Tara Wolfgang, Tess Botsis, That Girl and Her Dog, The Fiber Circus, The Hatter's Madness, The Plants Channel, The Plants Meow, Tim Burton, Tracy Buzzell, Tyler Frakes, Valerie, Vanessa Gutierrez, Venus J, Victoria Olson, Wendy Hartman, Whitney Sales, Wicked Witch Roxy, Will H, Winter Rose, and Yvonne Smith. Thank you so much, guys, for your monthly support. I hope that you guys enjoy your membership perks. I hope that you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week. I will see you on next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central. Love you. Bye.